Hello, my name is Ann Polson, and I work for the Henry Art Gallery at the University of Washington. Fun fact about us, we were the very first art museum in the entire state of Washington. We've been around for over 90 years, and we have shown all kinds of art. And today, I want to talk to you about something that you'll find in almost any kind of museum that you visit that will help you understand what is on display there, and that is the label. So first, I want to talk about where you can find the labels. Then I want to talk about what's in the label, what kind of information we put in them. And then third, I want to show you how to make your own label because I think that sounds like a lot of fun. Okay, are you ready? Let's get started. So let's say you're visiting a museum and you see something you think is particularly beautiful or maybe just funny or there's something about it that you find interesting and you want to know more about it. So where are you going to look for that and how are you going to figure that out? Let's start by taking a look in one of our galleries, which are the rooms where we display the art. So here we have a few different pieces of art on the walls and in a case. Can you spot where there's just one label for one work of art? How about that one? Yeah, so sometimes it's just one for one. Sometimes though, maybe two pieces of art are connected and so there's only one label for two of them. Can you see any like that in here? Yeah, either one of these. So in this one that's over here, they're by the same artist and from the same set, so they go together. This one over here, they're pretty different works of art, but they're by the same artist and um, the curator was drawing a connection between them. Sometimes they're in a case like this one, and that's a little bit different. So sometimes the label might be inside the case, or sometimes like with this one, it's right there on the wall. Uh, there's a lot of information in this one, so they're actually two labels, but they, they go together. So let's take a look at a work of art that has just one label, like this photograph. Can you spot the label? Yeah, there it is. All right, let's take a closer look at it and see what kind of information is in there. So the top of the label is what we call the tombstone record. It's right there. It's not that kind of tombstone just uh, tombstone information, so the most basic important information about the piece. For instance, we have the artist's name. He's James Lockwood. Then over here, it tells us that he's from the United States of America. And we know that he was born in 1936. If he lived a long time ago, then there would be a birth date and a death date. So like 1836 to 1904, something like that. Next, we have information that's just about the piece. Like this is the title, so that photograph that we were just looking at is called Los Angeles River. And then this label tells us that it was made in 2008. We also learn that it is a chromogenic color print, which is a technical way of saying that it's a color photograph. And then the rest of it is what we call the credit line, which tells us about the ownership. For starters, it is owned by the Henry Art Gallery, where I work. Then, it tells us that it was the gift of James and Christina Lockwood. This last little bit is called the accession number, and a lot of different museums do it their own way. What we do is we take the year that it came to us, 2008, and then we put the number of... Um, the order that it came to our collection. So it was the 175th work that we acquired or that we got in the year 2008. And then the rest of it is information that the curator wanted you to know, maybe a special insight so you can learn something about it or better understand why it's next to the other ones that are in the same room. You might be asking though, what happens when you put a work of art on the internet? Like right now, a lot of museums, including the Henry, are closed due to the pandemic. So we've been putting exhibitions online so that people can still see things. But there's not going to be a wall for us to put a label on, so how do we do that? Well, here is a bit from an online exhibition that we've had up. And uh, so we've got these works of art and almost all the same information that was on the labels. Can you find it? 
There it is. Yes. So let's take a closer look. It's the same kind of thing. We've got the artist. This time we don't have where the artist is from or when they lived. So we've got the title. This piece of art is called Alba. It was made in 1992. It is an aqua tint on Somerset textured paper, which again is a technical description, but it's the way that we say that it's a print. Then it's owned by the Henry Art Gallery, and it was a gift of Bert and Jane Berman. All right, do you remember? So this means that it came to us in the year 2000, and it was the 42nd thing to do that. Okay, so now I've shown you a little bit about labels and captions, and I want to show you how to make your own. And I am going to start by using this lovely piece of art that was made by my friend Jacob. Okay, so here we are with this handy dandy document that I've made. And the artist's name is Jacob. So we're gonna put that in there. And then Jacob is from the United States. And he was born in 2010. And then the title for this piece is The Lighthouse. So we're gonna put that. And let's see, I know that he made it in 2018. So we're gonna put that there. And it is made from colored pencil on cardstock. And he gave it to me. I own it. So we will say that it is in the collection of Ann Polson because it's true and it sounds kind of fancy. And it was a gift of the artist. So that's what I'm going to put there. And then let's see. He gave it to me in 2018 and it was the second thing I got that year. So that's how we're going to make the accession number. So let's take a look at the finished label. So there's Jacob's work of art, and then next to it is a label that gives basic information to help people understand what they're looking at. Okay, so now that we've made a label, let's try making a caption. And let's do that for this gorgeous piece of art that was given to me by my friend, Fiona. All right, so if you were putting this online, like I, would, I probably would have scanned this, and then I would put it right here in this little box. Uh, but let's just work on the captions. Let's see. Her name is Fiona. And, you know, she didn't give this a title, which a lot of artists don't make titles for their works of art. So what we're going to do is we are going to say that it is untitled. And that's totally fine. Let's see. It was also made in 2018. And it is marker on cardstock. And again, I'm the owner. So... The collection of Anne Poulsen. Fiona gave it to me. So it was a gift of the artist. And she gave it to me in 2018. And it was the third thing I got that year. Cool. So let's take a look at the finished product. And there it is. It's Fiona's artwork with its very own caption. And I hope that you will all try this out and make your own labels and captions. And feel free to add more text if you want to write something else like the curator often does to give you more information about the piece or just leave it at that basic tombstone information. I hope that you enjoyed talking about labels today. I know I did. And I also hope that next time you come to the Henry or you go to any other museum that you like, maybe even visit a new one, that you'll read the labels and see what they can teach you about that work of art or whatever it is that that museum has to share with you. I hope that you will let me know if you have any questions about what people do all day when they work in a museum. Anything about maybe putting on an exhibition or taking care of the art in our collection or whatever else. If you have a question, please do send it my way. And if you look at our website and maybe take a peek at our collection there, we have so many thousands of works of art that are available there. And you can let me know if you have a favorite one. I would love to hear from you. This is my email address, ANNP at henryart.org. I would also like to say a very special thank you to my friends Jacob and Fiona on Camino Island for giving me such beautiful pieces of art and giving me the permission to share them with you today. I hope to see you again soon. Bye.